air conditioning on this 1988 325i. This is video number two. First video was just visual inspections, and now I'm gonna explain. It has zero PSI refrigerant in it. It came in this way. Uh, basically had one PSI, 1 1.4 or something like that. Um, I'm gonna explain. Here's the vacuum setup. This is a true blue hose. This is a silicone hose going for it's three eighths inside to actually this is three quarter inside diameter into a three eighths port and then we have our traditional lines that i have added a second coating on here it's literally filled up with silicone dielectric grease on the inside of this shrink wrap and then i shrank the tubing on there this is shrink tubing that is protecting my original yellow jacket hoses that are underneath here for extending their length of their life and I have a core removal tool. So I have the core removal tool on the low side right here, but I opted not to put a core removal tool because I want to show you this other tool. This is when you're not going to remove a tool. This is a core depressing tool. This leaves the valve core inside. I got it on there. It threads on. And then when you screw this device down right here or up, I can't even do it one-handed, Never mind. Uh, but when you screw this up or down, that little pin hole you see in the very center of the depressor will go down as you screw it down and it'll depress the valve core so you could hook up the gauges to these and then you can unscrew it. So that's what that tool is. This tool right here is a core removal tool. And this is for, you could remove the valve cores while you have refrigerant gas inside the system and not lose any of the gas. So say you hooked up and you were finished your air conditioning job and you remove your fitting and then you find out the valve core is leaking out refrigerant but you just recharge and you go god i don't want to do it all over again i don't want to lose it you get one of these you slip it on you put this little part on there and you screw that down there and it will come through just like you see right there and you twist it and you'll remove the valve core and it has a rubber o-ring there it has a rubber and a seal inside there it doesn't lose no gas you pull this all the way up when you undid your valve core and while it's still screwed on you turn the valve no knob right there and you just sealed off the refrigerant but you removed the valve core with the valve core removing tool out through here so now you throw away the old valve core you put in a new valve core you put this tool back inside there. I have made videos on this actually using it, but I'm just going over it with you right now. You put this tool back on. Now it will not lose gas. Now you open it up and now you can stick the valve core and the valve core will come down there. And now you can spin the top and you can screw in the new valve core with losing no refrigerant. You back it back up off the new valve core and then you can unscrew it off the fitting off the line and you lose no gas. So that's a good little tool. And it aids on your speed of uh, recovery or recharging or anything like that because you remove the valve core. So here I remove the valve core and God dang it, I don't know where I put the valve core. I got distracted in the video. I removed the valve core and my dumb ass doesn't know where I put it. All right, that's gonna be, uh, I'll take care of that problem later. Oh, I got new valve cores anyway. What am I talking about? Just change the valve core. That's what I'm doing anyway. Um, so, so let's go into the vacuum. We're gonna perform our vacuum. This is video number two, and there will be a video number three. So let's plug in the vacuum pump. I'm gonna record the vacuum right here. I'm gonna data graft it on the screen here. I think I am hooked up. We're zero PSI, as you can see. That's it. You hear the pump come on and you will not see anything move because I didn't open up the gauge here. I have both the high side and low side. Let's open them. The vacuum is off. The vacuum pump is on. I have this depressed all the way down. As you can see, looking right there, you see this is all the way down and you can see the difference. This one is up that one is down so that's depressing the core the core is still in there so let's open the vacuum one two three there we go the vacuum pump is open we are now drawing a vacuum so you'll see this move once it gets into the microns it's still at 28 
see if I could keep that in the background if you could still see it. So now we're into microns there and you can meet microns there, C14, 12. And let's uh, data graph that. And you can see it's starting right there at 12, just above 12. You can see we're down to nine now. We're getting down there. There's a little software lag between the speed of what this reads before this reads it. But you can see the, the micron range is going down, down, down. And with a set of analog gauges, you cannot measure this kind of vacuum. This vacuum is so low, your analog gauges stop at 29.9 and then that's all you do. This is much, much deeper than that and you can actually see it with your eyes. And you see we're starting to level out. And I am taking vacuum off the high side and the low side simultaneously. Remember, this customer came in. I have no information. I was just told it doesn't work. I did a visual in the first video, partial video, uh, visual. And it uh, looks like we had a little explosion of something coming out here. You see that little peak? And we're still going up. And then we're leveling out again. And we're going up. So let me turn off this uh, vacuum pump and see where we level off at. Let's see if we have a really obvious leak or not. So now the whole system will equalize between high side and low side and vacuum is like a solid, it's a liquid. Imagine a liquid inside a fish tank and you shake the fish tank and the water splashes up on the sides and it takes a while for the water to level out before it's nice and steady. Vacuum does the exact same thing when read off your micron meter. When you turn it off, it does funny things. Uh, it goes up and down, it'll go down. If you have a leak or a lot of moisture, it'll go up. I explained that in other videos in more detail. And I'm actually gonna make a video of very good videos to go watch so you understand moisture contamination and how to use a vacuum meter. Within the next few days, I'm gonna start posting other YouTubers who are nothing more than professionals at education on air conditioning so you too can go watch them and learn more. I don't have time to make the kind of videos that these guys make, but these guys that I'm going to tell you to go see, subscribe to, and watch their videos, everything they have in all their videos is stuff that my dad started teaching me at the age of 12. So it's not that any of this information was new, it's just that certain people didn't have access to this kind of information. Uh, my dad used to tell me birds of a feather flock together and uh, it tells a whole story in itself. Okay, so here you can see the vacuum is leveling off. It's not rising, it's going down. And that's just leveling off, it'll leak off. Now you you should not do a vacuum decay test through your refrigerant hoses. That's a very bad thing to do a vacuum decay test. But when you cannot afford to have a nice, really nice vac um, micron meter and a nice set of gauges all at one time, it's too much for you, it's a little too expensive. If, if this was really expensive for you and, and buying a micron gauge is just too much, this has a built-in micron meter inside of it. It's okay for getting a close estimation of what's wrong, but it's not perfect and it's not the right way, but it is just one more way to level your game up to the next level without having a separate micron gauge that when you make money in the future, you charge good for your repairs, you can afford to buy better tools and educate yourself. And the tools don't fix the jobs, you do. What's between your ears, that gray matter, your brain, your education, your skill set, this is more important than good tools at first. Okay, you see we're leveling off. We're staying at 700, so I'm gonna stay right there and I'm gonna give it some nitrogen. Now, with a four port manifold, and as you see, I've dropped my gauges and they're both broken. Both of these are all bent up inside. I don't care. Uh, for me, I don't need them. I have enough experience. Uh, I'm, I have this backed off to nothing right now and I only need a little bit and I have a gauge right here to tell me what's gonna really happen. So let's, let me open up the vacuum one more time because I wanna show you what happens here when I give it vacuum. Okay, I'm gonna open right now. I'm opening the vacuum and we're gonna watch this. There was a little spurt of air that was trapped inside my uh, fitting, but you'll see it immediately go back down. I just
just needed to show you this before I stop all the way. Okay, so now I'm gonna stop again, turn off the vacuum. Now I wanna flush dry nitrogen. I wanna get some out of here. So let me open up the pressure, it went up. I know it's about 900 PSI or so, it might be a little less. It won't go any more than that because it's broken. And I break these all the time. Uh, that's just me, I'm rough with my tools. Sorry guys, I destroy my tools. If anybody makes a good tool, and it lasts me over a year, it's a good tool, like this. <laughs> okay, you can hear the hiss of nitrogen coming out. So now I'll close it off. I know there's no air inside this line. That's done. Now I want a little bit of pressure in there, so I'm just gonna crank it a little bit. That'll be about 25, 50 PSI on my set of gauges, somewhere around there. I wanna go up to about 150, 175. I'm gonna close the low side. So you see the low side is closing? There, low side is closed. I'm keeping the high side open. So I'm gonna push dry nitrogen in the high side and it's gonna go along the liquid line valve towards the expansion valve. The dry nitrogen is gonna go through the evaporator, through the expansion valve into the evaporator and come up on the low side on the suction line time. So let's open up our nitrogen. It's closed. There, I gave it a little, a little squirt. Now, if you see three psi there, zero psi on the low side, and it dropped back down. Let me open it again. Fifty psi. It's coming up on the other side. So now I'm going to give it a little bit more pressure. Boom, boom. One hundred and twenty. Give it a little more pressure. 160. 167. I hear some. I have a leak from my fitting. I gotta tighten my uh, fitting right there. So let's do that I think I may need to change the o-rings on these things again so let's find out so let's turn off the nitrogen and see if we have a leak Do I have my squirt bottle? where's my squirt bottle okay so let's turn off the nitrogen there we just turned off the nitrogen let's let it sit and stabilize for a minute and I think by me tightening it up, I may have tightened it enough. We're watching it real carefully, I see a little bit of drop, but that might be refrigerant hoses stretching. And, okay. So, usually you wait 10 or 15 minutes, but if you, we're gonna rush this up for the video. I'm gonna hit the button for tightness test. Tightness test. Now we just went to a new screen. Now I'm gonna hit the enter button and this means to start the tighten, tightness test. And it's gonna read down the minutes and seconds right here, time. And it's gonna read down the pressure drop over here. So I'm not doing this in full detail exactly correctly. I'm just doing this because I don't have time to do it correctly for you guys, sorry. But I wanna give you a quick rundown and just kind of give a, a rough overview. So let's hit the start button and that's the enter. Start. So we have 0.0, .0 and that means no drop right now. We have 86 or uh, 176.6 on both sides. And the seconds are counting down right here. And then you would normally let this rest 15 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever you want to do and see how many it actually measures in tenths of a PSI of drop. I'm having a hard time because I'm getting reflection off my screen from the sun hitting it and blinding me when I'm trying to make sure that you can see it through the video camera. So you got an idea of what's going on here. You see a little tiny, tiny bit of drop, but I am performing this test before letting it stabilize for 10 or 15 minutes. 
just don't fill it up with nitrogen and then hit the start button or right? you fill it with nitrogen go away do some paperwork go do your visual go to another car let it rest 10 or 15 minutes and then you hit start and start your test after you've uh, closed off your nitrogen So we dropped five tenths of a PSI. You cannot read this on an analog gauge. That's even less than the needle can move and that you can see with the human eye within this length of time. So you would not even see that, but now we're six tenths of a PSI. So there's a little bitty leak somewhere. All right, so now I'm gonna jump on to, this is where you would go around and you can go around, cause you didn't use refrigerant. You could go around with your ultrasonic leak detector or you could go around with your soapy bubbles if you don't own a ultrasonic leak detector. So I'm gonna break out the ultrasonic leak detector and see what I can find. So this is video two. We are now gonna jump on to video three. I'm gonna close out right here. I'll see you on the next one with the ultrasonic leak detector.